Commissioners. This conference will now be recorded. I do see uh, at least one mic. Uh, is it uh, Guido Paparoni? Can you uh, put yourself on mute there, please? Thank you very much. So work sessions are an opportunity for board members to discuss in issues informally with staff and invited guests. The board encourages members of the public to attend work sessions and listen to the discussion, but there is generally no opportunity for public comment. Members of the public wishing to address the board are welcome to do so during the board's regularly scheduled meetings held twice monthly. We'll start with board communications and Commissioner Bangs. Uh, good morning. I really, honestly, I've been doing a lot of reading over this last two weeks. I've had a number of emails regarding STR concerns, which I'm, I'm sure, you know, I, I appreciate all of the emails that I've been receiving and I appreciate all of the information um, that I've received from all of our constituents. Um, I look forward to discussions and conversation regarding them. And I've also been down the vortex of the HCP still. Um, and just doing a lot of uh, contemplation, I guess, is the best way to describe it. A lot of contemplation um, and looking forward into the future and how the impacts will affect us. So that's what I've been up to. Well, thank you, Commissioner Banks. We'll move to Commissioner Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just uh, completed the, the National Association of Counties High Performance Leadership Academy. At the end, um, the summary was, there's no I in team. There is a we in teamwork. And number two, feedback is our friend. So uh, with, I have great appreciation for everyone who participates with all the passion and good intention and everything they've got to make this, our neighborhoods, our whole Clatsop County a better place. Uh, I'm looking forward to the board taking a step back and considering, contemplating what's the best way to build a strong community and going forward with affection and respect for everyone in a well-considered process with outcomes that are equitable and just. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Thompson. Well stated. Uh, Commissioner Toyoka. Good morning, everyone. Um, I too have been reading deeply and reading emails, constituent correspondence, talking to people about uh, our short-term rental ordinances as well as our comprehensive plan <laughs> and uh, planning commission's issues. So it's been a busy time. Uh, and at the same time, uh, Commissioner Banks and I attended county college. So <laughs> a lot going on for all of us. Um, I think we'll have some great discussion today about short-term rental. And I think uh, hopefully we will engage in the near future on our planning commission, the uh, mission and how it takes us and dovetails into our comprehensive plan. So I look forward to that process. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Toyoka. Do we have Commissioner Webb? I, I'm not seeing her. Is she joining us here by phone or have any anybody heard from Commissioner Webb? We have not heard from her. Okay, I might shoot her a text just to remind her that we started at 10. I can do that for you, Commissioner. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, I, my only communication is I sent a draft of a letter to uh, support Mertz in their efforts uh, to uh, continue their research, the good work that they're doing out there. So uh, I received feedback from the board in support of me sending that letter and I will do that today. So, so thanks again for, for responding back. If I could have everybody that's uh, not presenting to mute your microphones, please. That will help. We've got a number of people on this 
in this meeting and we want to make sure that people can be heard when they're presenting. And then I, I know Guido Paparoni, you had uh, two windows open and I see one of them still got a microphone open. If you wanted to maybe close that window, that would be great. Uh, we'll move on to the legislative update at this time. Do we have Philip available? Who who will be who will be presenting on the legislative update this morning? Um, I can touch base. I'm not sure if he's caught in the meeting, but I did send out on his behalf a list of. Um, all of the bills that died and all of the bills that are still alive. I sent that out uh, shortly before this work session, so it should be in your inbox. Um, it's broken out by tabs, uh, by subject area to make it a little bit easier to see. Um, and then the, the um, spreadsheet has links to it. So if you click on the bill number, then it'll take you to the, the text for each of those bills. And so um, I apologize. Uh, like I said, I believe he might be caught up in a meeting if he's not able to be here now. If there's anything that you are needing more information on in the meantime, I am happy to follow up with him and get that information for you. Okay, thank you, Monica. Yeah, I, just, I did see that you had sent this out just recently and I haven't had a chance to go through any of the um, alive uh, bills, dead bills uh, listings here. Um, so I think it'll we can take after this meeting and and do that. And if we have any questions that come up, uh, we'll we'll send those to to Monica. Um, next, we'll move on to the public health update. And uh, Margot Lalich, I believe, joined us. Margo? I'm here. Good morning, commissioners. Um, so five minute update, um, I'm gonna move quickly. Um, uh, I did wanna let you know first, I'm gonna start with the Maritime World that I've been in correspondence with OHA and their, what we call their Epi Communicable Disease Infectious Disease Team because I have the standard operating procedures back from 2013 when the Coast Guard, the bar pilots, the quarantine station, we were all working together to develop protocols. This was post 9-11 when we were beginning the preparedness program. And so I recently sent it to them to ask them if it had been updated since that time, because um, there are separate protocols related to COVID. And then again, recently we had a ship where there were, were cases on board. And so that standard operating procedure has not been updated. So I'm just trying to to cover the bases on that to make sure public health um, is uh, prepared and to follow the proper protocols, um, knowing that the state is also working on um, Ebola as well. Um, data, I, per Commissioner's Web request um, last meeting, I've broken down the data by demographics related to vaccine administration, and there's a new dashboard that the state is going to be making public. Um, I don't know that it's public as of today yet. Um, so I'm just compiling all of that data and I will be sending it out for all of you to review as well as the testing, the request for what is, what is our, our test results look like by demographic. And I can get that generally, but I wanted it a li little more detailed and I'm hoping the EPI team at the state can pull that data um, more efficiently than I can locally out of our what we call OPERA, which is our COVID database system. So I am working on that um, and I'll get that data to you. Again, we're very busy with clinics. Um, we have a seven hour clinic today at Seaside High School. We have clinics on um, uh, Thursday at the Astoria Fairgrounds. We've completed our first round of vaccinations for the canneries. Um, and uh, there were a couple canneries, as I mentioned last week, that got the Johnson & Johnson. We had a very successful um, uh, a listening session with them on Friday, um, answered their questions. Norma went with me and um, we will proceed with Moderna. We're expecting to hear um, on Friday uh, what the, how we will proceed using Johnson & Johnson vaccine. In the meantime, we're not pausing anything. We're proceeding with Moderna, except for the Jewel clinics. Um, that clinic on the 23rd has been canceled and it's rescheduled for the 7th of May. We have finalized our, our, our list for reaching the homebound and we thought we would start tomorrow. But again, 
we decided to postpone that till Monday and do that outreach every Monday um, because we really want to be able to use the Johnson and Johnson vaccine if at all possible. I've been working with OHA um, both to build our capacity locally, not only the present, but in anticipation of the fall and already next winter for testing, as well as our case investigation and contact tracing. So uh, we had a meeting with OHA on this last week, and um, I just recently received information around um, uh, what the coordinator's role would look like, as well as those specific positions. Um, so there'll be vaccine will be part of what we do, but we'll continue to do case investigation, contact tracing, as well as testing. Um, so we we'll wanna make sure that we have um, and a, a robust capacity going forward. Um, connected to testing, as we all know, there's increased cases um, uh, pretty much across the, across the board. Um, as I look at the data and when I'm following the new reports, you know, it's not one thing or the other. It's all expected OHA. They're expecting it. Um, the state epidemiologist, we run a meeting with him on Friday. And while it's concerning, as we open up, as tourism increases, as I witnessed all the people in Cannon Beach last weekend, right, um, we're going to see more cases. Um, and so again, it's that prevention education side as well as vaccination um, uh, as well. So those cases are, yes, we're getting some outbreaks, but they're household, we're seeing quite a few um, household contacts and then what we call sporadic or employment related cases. Counties are asking the state to reconsider their investigative guidelines because in certain settings, and I may have mentioned this, one case can be considered an outbreak. That makes it really hard on local public health, as you can imagine. And so the state's listening to us, they're hearing it, um, but also they're not ready to change the guidance quite yet. But hopefully that will happen going forward. And also beginning to look at COVID-19 as something that while it's a pandemic, it's also endemic, meaning it's within the community. It's not going away just like flu comes and goes as well as, as other seasonal illnesses. And so our response to it will be as such because we've, we, you know, we've built the infrastructure to respond. We're still doing well in our county. I think we're in that less than the top 10 um, in the state for our vaccination outreach. Um, at least 39% of the populations receive one dose and um, about 23%, actually probably a little bit more of that has received the complete um, uh, two dose vaccination for those who receive the Moderna. So we're just continuing to move forward. Happy to announce that we have um, listening sessions that will go live this week and then we're scheduling them out at least for the next three weeks to be able to meet the community where they're at. We have a, a fantastic communications team that's supporting this. Our first listening session will be a Facebook live session tomorrow evening. Um, we will have Dr. Nair, Dr. Greco, myself, um, hopefully CCA will be part of that um, as our lead CBO and uh, Chris Lehman. And so it will be um, a facilitated listening session where we'll be able to present on what we're doing respectively and then also have a moderator to um, field questions. We expect parents to be involved. We're uh, reaching out to superintendents to engage the community as we move to younger and younger age groups. So um, I, you'll, I'm sure, get the links and information for all of that. Um, we're working out the details today and tomorrow. And um, it looks like uh, Providence will get its freezer for Pfizer by next week. Again, that we have to, you know, there's some regulation that has to go on um, when you install new refrigeration or freezer, but it looks like we will get some Pfizer vaccine by early May and begin to reach those 16 and 17 year olds, not just public health, but also build that capacity within our local uh, health system, pediatric clinics. Um, and already last night, I got an email from the state. They want to know how we're planning to reach 12 year olds. And, um, and we're just like, whoa, wait a minute. We're just getting to the 16 and 17 year olds. So it's moving very fast. And I'm really grateful for great colleagues in the community to support the effort. And then I also shared out with Don and Monica and um, I believe Chair 
Quila, um, just an update on the bills that the Conference of Local Health Officials this has wanted. nothing to do with what we're doing, so it's okay. We're not late yet. So if anyway, you are, can, can everyone mute their phones or their video feeds, please? Please mute. Thank you. Great. Um, and lastly, thanks for your patience. Um, there are a lot of bills that the Conference of Local Health Officials and Public Health is monitoring this session. Um, I had a chance to glance at all of them and catch up um, and have shared that out. And if you have specific questions, um, don't hesitate to email me um, and I will um, uh, provide you the best answer I'm able to at the time. That's all, happy to answer questions. Thank you very much, Margo. I mean, a tremendous workload for a county health director or a county health department, the vaccine task force doing a tremendous job. Also the volunteers, when you have seven hour clinics, you know, these can be very taxing. Um, how are we doing on volunteers, Margo? Well, it, you know, I, generally speaking, we're doing well. And I will say, I think we've been a little bit spoiled by the generosity of the uh, of the community. We have about 300 volunteers registered. Um, but again, these longer clinics are, are, are hard for volunteers to do all day. And again, they're going into the evening, which can be a little bit challenging. Um, so we're finding more gaps and vacancies. We've restructured the number of volunteers we need. And then we have absolutely no reservation about reaching out to our community partners. Columbia Memorial Hospital, Providence is making, you know, pharmacies and, and intern pharmacists available. They're making their paid staff available to vaccinated clinics. Um, our EMS system is supporting this response as well. So we do get, I get out there and vaccinate as well. Chris is vaccinated and we all step up and do whatever is um, needed. And really the gratitude of the community is quite frankly, the payback. It's just like it, how can you not, you know, how can you not step up and do it? And when we're pushed to the volunteers and we say, hey, we're really short, can you stay at least a couple more hours? Um, they never say no or almost never. So, and if they do, they've got a really good excuse. Yeah, thank you, Margo. I think the pooling of resources has been such a, a huge thing uh, throughout these last few months. And you mentioned about Providence and their freezer um, and making that available to store Pfizer vaccine when it arrives here. Um, you know, the, the, this kind of uh, cooperation um, is just crucial and it's, and it's been just such a, a revelation to have everybody working together like they have over these months. And, and yeah. also, go ahead. Well, just um, you, you um, triggered this, this thought that we did put in an EOC request last week for volunteers. As you can imagine, there are requests all over the state for volunteers. And I think overall, we're in better shape than, than some smaller communities. And again, they don't provide those supports until you've exhausted all your resources locally. Um, and so uh, Vincent just received feedback that they are processing that request. So again, um, you know, no apprehension about tapping into any resources that are available. And, and the last thing is, that if you are 18 and over, you are eligible. And so folks, if you haven't got a vaccine and want one, you can uh, do the survey online at the county website, or you can call 325-8500, 503-325-8500 and sign up. Um, and you'll be scheduled for a vaccine shortly, correct, Mark? Yes, this is correct. And we're moving um, to transition the language a little bit because it's really, well, we do ask some very specific questions, of course, age related, whether or not um, an individual meets the criteria for homebound, there's transportation needs. We're not surveying like we were before when we were working very through very specific targeted populations. So I anticipate in the next couple of weeks, we're hoping to move towards a, a scheduling system so the public can go online and actually just schedule their appointment and we can make the slots available. So we're working through that process right now. Thank you, Margo. Any questions for our County Health Director? Okay, seeing none, thank you very much. Great job, great work. Oh, one other thing I do apologize. I'm looking, 
the commissioners, Commissioner Quila and Commissioner Bangs are also participating. I apologize for that on our, as I said, it's, everything's moving so quickly if you can't tell by my report. And um, we'll also be participating in the listening sessions. And I just, um, that's fantastic. So thank you and my apology for that oversight. Yes, and thank you, Commissioner Banks, who will be doing it uh, Wednesday and Thursday this week. Thank you for volunteering to do that. With nothing else, we'll go ahead and move on. Do we have uh, Philip or anybody to provide from PAC West to provide the legislative update? Have they joined us? Sorry, Commissioner, no, he has not. Okay. We'll go ahead and move on to item three on the agenda, which is the comprehensive plan update on page three. And Gail Henriksen, our community development director, is is here and will uh, provide the staff report. Thank you, commissioners. Good morning. Gail Henriksen, community development director. Uh, quickly, just to recap uh, on the process for the comprehensive plan update. Uh, we started in June of 2019. We held open houses throughout the county in the six planning areas and started our citizen advisory committees. So we're approaching uh, fairly quickly our two-year mark in this process. When we started, we did plan a three-month hiatus, uh, January, February, March of 2020, and we're in the process of preparing to uh, reconvene all the committees back in April of last year, and uh, we all know what happened after that with the pandemic. Uh, so we took a few more months. We began a meeting again back in June of last year, and to date, we have covered eight of the 18 goals in the comprehensive plan. Our uh, goal is to complete that review by December of this year and then uh, moving forward to also uh, work on the community plans that are associated which, with each of our planning areas. Uh, some quick observations about the past year and uh, where, where we've been and where we're heading and what we're seeing. Um, obviously, the pandemic has slowed down everything and uh, it takes longer to um, process materials in terms of just the complexity. I think everybody's a little uh, attention deficit these days with the, the virtual meeting platforms and just life in general. Uh, we know that there are a lot of technology limitations around the county and some places having very poor access to broadband and internet, some places having better connectivity. Um, one thing that we've noticed too is public participation has changed a bit. Uh, when we were holding in-person live meetings, we had uh, certain groups or persons who would come to all the meetings. Uh, a lot of those people have dropped out, but new people have started attending virtually. And I'm not sure if that's due to just technology limitations, uh, different um, anxiety and stress levels and focus levels, uh, but it has changed, but there continues to be public participation. I think one of the, the most uh, crucial areas and observations that we've seen as a staff is uh, what is coming out of the committees in terms of how it relates to what is uh, possible under state statute and what we believe to be the board direction and how they would like the, the plan process to um, proceed moving forward and what their expectations are for the committee members. And so we, we see a lot of aspirational goals um, that are being put forward by the, the committees, but um, also realizing that a lot of those aspirational goals just will not be able to be included in the final plan simply because they're not permitted by state statute uh, is one of the, the big issues that we've seen over the past year as we've gone through this process. Um, moving forward, uh, staff throughout the past two years, we've been incrementally adjusting the process as we uh, run into new issues or try to facilitate or ease or expedite the process, and we'll continue to make those incremental changes. Um, we're going to be consolidating our review of some of the goals so that we can, again, expedite that process and uh, put goals in context with each other where they make sense and where they have overlapping policies. Uh, we also, more importantly, want to make sure that the board uh, continues to remain involved and is getting monthly updates, and those will 
take place either through written reports that will be submitted to the county manager for inclusion in his weekly report to you, or there may be additional work sessions scheduled to keep you informed about where we are in the process, but also to let you know what we're hearing coming out of the committees or concerns that uh, we may have moving forward in the process. Um, one other thing that we may want to do, um, and you know, in hindsight, when pandemic hit, this might have been the perfect time to do it, but um, it's never too late to try and improve our process. But we may need to go back and look at our public involvement plan and how uh, we're conducting that. And that's uh, something that I know we talked about in our individual meetings yesterday about some of this. And for staff, our goal is to end up with a final process, first of all, to complete the process, uh, but to end up with a product that the board is able to adopt and can support. And that's really the goal that we're, we're trying to reach together. Um, so I'm keeping my report short to give you more time for input and questions for me, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. Um, any questions right off the bat here or any comments? You know, this this has been, uh, you know, almost, well, I see Commissioner Bangs. I'll go ahead and let you go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I, I just wanted to to reiterate um, to Gail that uh, for me, looking from the outside, looking in, um, I appreciate the additional communication that is going to be provided to us as commissioners. But not only that, I think that we need to press pause and kind of reflect on how can we exp expedite this process because we're only at goal eight and it's almost been two years. And I feel like um, I don't want to exhaust our staff. And, and, you know, I also want this process to be um, positive and and taking into account the variety of different thoughts and opinions and so i encourage staff and i encourage gail to to take possibly press pause and take a step back and see how we can streamline this process with our community involvement um because i i just i feel like i feel like for our staff because we have our strategic plan on board for staff they have things that are on their plate and making their to-do list longer um, is not an option in my personal opinion. I'd much like, much prefer to make their to-do list shorter and simplify this process. So those are just my thoughts. Yeah, thank you, Commissioner Bangs. I, I think I share some of the, those um, observations and concerns myself. Um, I know that we've got a you know different membership of the advisory committees because some folks have had to leave and new folks have come on. We've got new members on our planning commission. We've got new members on the the county commission uh, since this process started. So it probably isn't a bad idea to have a, a a meeting where we can sit down and kind of see the big picture. What are we trying to achieve with the comprehensive plan update? Um, let's sit down with the planning commission and, and make sure that we're both on the same page. I, I think those are some steps that maybe after two years are probably warranted um, to have that discussion and be able to provide some guidance uh, going forward. Do you have any other questions or com I see Commissioner Thompson has her hand up. Thank you. Um, I have a, a different set of concerns, I think. Uh, I appreciate staff's technical expertise and the tremendous effort they have put forth in applying their technical expertise to an extremely ambitious and a really wonderful citizen involvement process. My concern as I've attended meetings and listened to a great deal of community input, that there is a disconnect between, um, I would call it scope of authority, chain of command issues, and what has been termed aspirational goals. Any citizen involvement process um, depends on who is willing and able to participate in it. And to the extent possible, I think staff has done everything they know how to do to design a process that's widely inclusive. Nevertheless, not everyone is equally able to participate. So the job of the county commissioners 
is to be accountable to the public who elect us, who put us in place to do our job. We take an oath of office as commissioners to follow the law and to be accountable to the voters who put us in office. As we look at what staff does, we have, we have protocols to follow. We have scope of authority, we have chain of command. The County Board of Commissioners supervises only two people. They're at the top of my screen, the County Manager and County Council. Everyone else is accountable through an internal chain of command. With all of the personnel changes and all that we have learned, because it's been a learning experience for everyone involved, I think. I think it's not only desirable, I think it's essential that we hit pause, as Commissioner Bangs put it, and take a broad look to evaluate where we started, where we are now, and how we move into the future in a way that is constructive, that is respectful, that is law-abiding, that is sound public policy, that respects everyone. So I say it's time to hit pause. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Thompson. Um, Commissioner Toyoka in the dark. <laughs> It's a, it's a nice day, so there's sunlight pouring in. Can you complain about that, really? <laughs> no. Uh, I am in agreement uh, with Commissioner Thompson and others that we need to, um, basically we need to have a meeting with the, the Board of County Commissioners and the Planning Commission to establish goals and protocols. I mean, we, need, we don't need to be on the same page, and we have to achieve the same goal. Um, so I'm in agreement with Commissioner Thompson fully on that. I would like to see, you know, I don't know if we press pause or whatever, you, however you want to term it, but I think we need to have that dialogue to get us back on path. So however we can achieve that, I'd like to see that happen. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Toyoka. I see Commissioner Webb has joined us. We were just discussing comprehensive plan update and we're talking about um you know possibly having a uh, a reset maybe sit down with the planning commission um and have a discussion about goals and and the path going forward uh, specifically with the public outreach piece of it do you have any comments um first let me apologize i was in a noha board meeting talking about some really important stuff. Uh, so um, I, I really apologize uh, for being late. Yeah, um, I have felt for quite a while um, that the process was really kind of taking too long and, and was a little tedious. Um, and I, I like the idea very much of a meeting with the Planning Commission and having a, having a, a nice conversation about their experience in the process and ours, um, and maybe even including uh, the countywide uh, advisory committee as well. I don't know if that's too many people, or um, but but I do think it's time to um, to slow down a little bit and and see where everybody is right now, which I think is appropriate in a process that's been going on for two years already. Um, so I, I like the idea. Yeah, thank you, Commissioner Webb. Mm -hmm. Any other comments, questions? Uh, Gail, did you have anything more you would like to add specifically about your report? Uh, no, no, just any questions that you may have. Thank you. Okay. Well, I think that that, oh, Commissioner Banks? Um, just a quick question, and this is for Gail. Um, I know we discussed yesterday uh, where we were at in, in each individual or where we're at in the goals, but as um, goals become completed, is it possible, um, and I don't know, I don't actually remember if I asked this yesterday, but is it possible to have you send any completed goals out to the commission for our purview? Uh, yes, we can do that. We have initial draft drafts of goals one through four that we put on the website last August. Uh, those 
have been reviewed now by Department of Land Conservation and Development and County Council, and we have several comments uh, pointing out where we the committees have recommended uh, goals and policies that we won't be able to achieve just because of state statutes. Uh, so I would prefer if the board is okay with this to uh, incorporate those comments and edits uh, before sending them back out to the board. Excellent, thank you so much. And I am very grateful that we've had such a, a, a full uh, group of people overseeing uh, these goals because I share Commissioner Thompson's concerns about making sure that anything that we put in print um, permanently is both legal and um, can be referred to in the future as, as something that is responsible and uh, not just a goal list, but actually something that can be used um, in the future. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Commissioner Banks. And we do thank all of the members of the Citizens Advisory Committees for their time and effort, and we want to uh, be fair with them and, and, and have this uh, discussion um, and then provide the parameters in which it's going to proceed. So thank you, Gail. Thank you, Commission, for good discussion. We'll move on to the next item which is the short-term rental ordinance draft re revisions and follow-up to February 24th work session. And that's on page 11 of the packet. And I will turn it back over to Gail, correct? Yes, or that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they gave me the hard topics today. Um, so back in February, we uh, had a work session about this topic, and uh, at that time, staff had six specific areas that we wanted some input from the board on, and we got some very clear direction from the board on uh, four of those items, and then uh, you sent us back to do a little bit more homework on the other two items. Uh, you also requested some information about takings and uh, how we may have a pot potential liability as a county if we begin making changes to our short-term rental ordinance. And you'll see in Exhibit B of your uh, agenda package that we do have a memo from County Council. Uh, I'm going to summarize, and she can correct me where I've incorrectly summarized, but uh, looking at the six items that we're looking at today only, uh, that the actions that we would be proposing uh, would not constitute a takings, uh, and she can uh, clarify that a little bit more. Uh, did you want to say anything, Joanna? No, I, I, I think um, that is well said. Uh, you know, we are going to have to do, once we come down and we refine uh, what direction the board is looking to do, um, we will, of course, analyze that again and make sure that we don't run afoul. But we have it in our minds about you know, some of the parameters now, and so far I don't see anything um, that would make me overly concerned. Okay, thank you, Joanna. So the four items where uh, staff understood clear direction was to reduce the permit length from five years to two years, to retain the fee at $550, that permits would become non-transferable, and that uh, we should include language that would clearly prioritize how complaints are processed. And we did revise that a little bit uh, to make hopefully make it clearer uh, life safety issues, overflowing septic, operating without a permit, and over occupancy would be our top short-term rental complaint priorities. Uh, following that would be um, other items such as, you know, garbage that's not in a receptacle, uh, um, I'm trying to think of another one, um, parking issues would be another one. Those would be a second tier violation that we would still investigate, um, but our enforcement action may be different than a life safety issue, and the time frame to complete our uh, investigation might be different because it's not a life safety issue and therefore a little bit lower priority. Uh, some of the items that we get complaints about, um, which are uh, trespassing, animal control, and uh, beach fires or burning during a burn ban period are outside of our jurisdiction as co-compliance, and those would be the level three complaints that we would get. 
uh, we would forward them to the appropriate jurisdiction who could actually uh, address the complaints, but there would not be any action that the county staff would be able to take. So we tried to spell that out very clearly in the code so that everybody had the same expectations of where their complaint would fall on the investigation scale. Um, so I'm, I'm going to pause there for just a moment. So of the five things, the prioritization, uh, transferability, fee, and permit length, that's four things, um, is the board okay with what staff has recommended based on what we understood your direction to be? Uh, Commissioner Thompson. Thank you. Um, I am not ready to move ahead with any of these recommendations at this point. Of all of the areas where there has been community concern and unresolved community conflict, the area of short-term rentals is the most contentious. We need to hit pause on this one more than any of the others, in my opinion. So I am not ready to commit. Thank you, Commissioner Thompson. Any other comments, questions? Uh, this is Commissioner Webb. Um, I'm I'm sorry. I, never never mind. I'll come back when my printer uh, stops. And there's less we, noise. We can hear you. Um, well, I just I, I support uh, Commissioner Thompson's um, remarks. I um, I actually did not receive a packet for today's meeting, so I, that's what my printer is doing at the moment. So I'm sorry. I just I don't feel that I have enough information, et cetera, um, to, to make any decisions. Yeah, thank you, Commissioner Webb. We, we have received a number of, of letters, correspondence, folks that have been interested in this issue. Uh, Commissioner Toyoka, I see you had your hand up there. Yeah, I do have some uh, question for clarification. Now, I guess pertaining to Arch Cape is the roads and beaches, those are all public access, public roads, public access beach, correct, in that area? Uh, the beach is public. Many of the roads are public. There. Are I believe there may be a few private roads down there and uh, there may be a private beach access or two, but the okay. beach itself is public. And I, and I, again, on record, I support Commissioner Thompson on this because there's, like I said, a litany of uh, correspondence that goes with this. And I think I agree with her that uh, this is a contentious issue that you know we, we can't take lightly. We have to be very deliberate in uh, discussion and in application. So I support Commissioner Thompson on that delay of, and let's get more information. Let's do diligence on this issue before we actually start resolving it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Toyoka. Commissioner Bangs. Um, I can support, you know, my fellow commissioners in, in that um, I feel like because this issue is so contentious uh, and and it does need to be addressed in, in what I feel is a slower process, um, just so that we can have full transparency for our constituents, but also in, in, in another thought process, that this isn't just in regards to one unincorporated area, it's in regards to, you know, uh, in, in my personal opinion, um, in regards to all incorporated area, unincorporated areas in our county and, um, what we do with the SDR process and, and any thoughts or proceedings that we do, you know, move forward with, um, it's doing so with uh, full transparency and also involvement from any uh, communities that would be impacted by any decisions that we made. Um, and not just one small um, single community, that this is a community, this is a, a discussion that we need to make sure that we involve um, other people from other areas also. And I just want to say I fully support pressing pause just for the fact that I feel like not only can we not address this quickly, but that um, our decisions will impact more than just one area. And so I want to make sure that we have that time and, and, and are able to 
um, field discussion from other potentially impacted communities. Yeah, thank you, Commissioner Bangs. I agree with you. This will set a precedent. I also agree that the letters received have been on polar opposite sides about whether or not this is an issue or what the concerns and uh, things really are. So I think it's uh, helpful to kind of take a step back. I agree with Commissioner Thompson's um, assessment. Any other uh, comments, questions? Anything more, Gail? No, thank you. Okay. We will move on to, and, and I, I will call out once more, did uh, Philip join us for the legislative update? No, Commissioner, he hasn't joined he did, on yet. He did not, okay. I'll go back to our agenda here. Next is the fiscal year 2020-2021 third quarter financials on page 38 of our packet and Jennifer Carlson is here. Congratulations. Hello, thank you. Bear with me as I give this presentation. I prepared it prior to my baby arriving. So yeah. <laughs> a lot has happened. Thank you. And then Teresa, are you gonna share? There we go. This one. Okay, can you see my presentation here? No? Yes. Yes. Okay. We, yes. <laughs> Great. All right. So, for our third quarter financials, this is for March 30th, 2021. Um, we're at 75% of the year. Let's see here. Um, in the general fund, you can see we've received 90% of our budgeted revenues. Um, we've expended 66% of expenditures. Um, for general roads, we're a little low on revenues, 23% received, expended 55% of budgeted expenditures. In public health, we've received 80% of the budgeted revenues and expended 53% of the budgeted expenditures. And we'll get into more detail on that as we go here. So here is for all the funds, the revenues collected, you can see we're at 73.5%, um, 44 million of the 60 million budgeted. Um, so that's looking good overall. Uh, let's see. And then, oops, for general fund, um, we've received 90% of those revenues. That's 20 million of the 22 million budgeted. And a breakout of what those 20, 20 million are is right here. We've got 46% of that is property taxes, 18% is timber sales, 13% is charges for fees, services, 8% um, intergovernmental revenues, room tax 5%, other state revenues 4%, federal revenues 3%, and other taxes 3%. And for more detail on that, we've got that right here. Um, the property taxes are 97% collected, 9.2 of the 9.5 million. Um, timber sales, 100% collected of what we budgeted. Uh, for charges for services and fines, 88% collected for what we budgeted. Um, room tax, we're over 135% collected what we budgeted. Um, and then the other ones are listed there as well. I won't go through each of them, but overall we've received well amount. Um, for our general fund expenditures by org, we've got here, um, most, most of them are in line just under the 75% as of March 31st. <laughs> um, there's a couple that are a little low and that would be the Board of Commissioners there the 67,000 that's way under and that's just because we budgeted for health insurance and that we haven't used that for for the board of commissioners so um there's 62,000 budgeted in there and we've only expensed 3,000 of that so that explains that um medical examiners pretty low where we got that one here's this and that's just at 50 percent um, and that's our personnel is just lower on that one. 
Um, but all in all, the general fund expenditures are looking really good. Um, here's payroll costs for the general fund. We've got 13.5 million in payroll costs, which is a 8% increase from the prior year. And that's just a result of um, increased FTEs, COLA increases, step increases, and health insurance rates. For public health, let's see, we've got, we've expended 2.3 million of the 4.3 million budgeted, so it's 53% expended. Um, you can see our emergency preparedness is up there because a lot of our work is in these these areas right now. So harm reduction is low. Um, babies first is low. You can tell where our energy is being expensed. Um, and here we have the general roads. Um, for the road admin and support, it's just under 60%. Um, road maintenance and construction, just under 40%. Equipment replacements, just over 80%. And um, road district is at 100 so 9.3 million of the 16 million budgeted there 55 percent overall and then we've got all the other funds here which i apologize i need to, to update this graph to show it only shows up to 50 percent here and um that should show more than that so i'll update that for the next one um but overall everything looks good i don't know if anyone has any questions Any questions? No questions. Not seeing any questions. Easy. I'm not going to let you I off. See, I see there we go. Commissioner <laughs> Love. I'm, I'm not going to let you off. You put too much work <laughs> into this. Um, <laughs> and so we're going to massage it a little bit. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I can remember that over the past, I think for this entire fiscal year, um, that I have been worried about what was because of the all the expenditure, all the efforts being uh, put put into place uh, in the pandemic, that the health department, other programs would suffer, and I think this proves exactly that. Uh, and I'm wondering if we need to think about maybe in our budget process addressing that issue, maybe and thinking about how we could, you know, inject, uh, what, first of all, when we have under expenditures in certain areas, um, does that, can we carry over that money into next fiscal year? What's the process for that sort of stuff? Yeah, and I'll let Monica touch on that if she'd like. Sure. So it all depends on the funding stream. In some instances, it, we cannot carry it over because it's grant re, it's grant based, and so we get reimbursed based on the work done. Um, I do know that uh, there have been concerns in regards to um, uh, early on during the pandemic. There were concerns in regards to the immunization program overall because um, just everybody was not going to appointments. Um, by choice, as well as just as it wasn't as convenient. And so there are there have been some concerns on that. And I know that um, Margo is working on shifting as as we have these tasks, these vaccination clinics in place, um, they, they're getting more efficient at it. And so they are shifting some of the work back to the program so that that can be done. Um, and so we've been working with the state in regards to those funding streams. And then we also have been through the budget process looking at how we can um, uh, support public health in the 21-22 fiscal year um, for um, providing more of that infrastructure to make sure that, that these programs um, continue to thrive. So good, good, thank you. Commissioner Thompson. Thank you, sir. I attended an AOC um, Health and Human Services Committee meeting. There was a bill in that in the state legislature, and I apologize because I cannot remember the number, but if we are providing a direction and feedback to PAC West, I'd like to highlight that bill, which was about the funding of public health at the state level from the state budget. 
because uh, I think Commissioner Webb is right. We've had an essential redeployment of resources. The problem is that public health at the state and national levels, at the very least, has been underfunded. So if we get more money from the state at the state level, we'll be able to do more here at the Clatsop County level. So please uh, forward that to PAC West if my colleagues agree with my um, estimation of this. Commissioner Webb, you do, thank you. I agree. Any other questions, comments? Yeah, I'm not seeing any. So thank you very much, Jennifer. Appreciate the thank presentation. You. Thanks. And do we have anything for the good of the order? Commissioner Thompson. Thank you, sir. I, I just want to appreciate the work of the county manager and the planning director, all the commissioners, all the community volunteers and the staff. We've been involved in some very, um, in some massive undertakings. And to the extent that we can communicate truthfully and um, with good humor and good grace with one another, it's furthered. Uh, I am I'm grateful to the county manager in particular for his leadership in this regard. He helps us all be good and do good together. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I echo that, Commissioner Thompson. Anything else for the good of the order? Commissioner Bank. Hey, I feel like the moral of the story of this work session is press pause. Um, so that we can all make sure that our ships are going the same direction and that our, we're not losing passengers along the way. And so I, I really appreciate this, this time that we're going to be allowed to narrow our focus and bring all of our, hopefully all of our committees and community um, volunteers and folks that are interested in input uh, basically all going the same direction and so that we become a powerful uh, force versus having such a wide breadth of scope. Um, I feel like sometimes when, when, our, when our scope is too wide, we tend to get lost in the weeds. And so I, I'm, I'm just saying I appreciate this time where we're hopefully going to be able to, to strengthen our direction. Um, and align ourselves uh, more closely with our strategic plan and, and hopefully with just everyone working together in general. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Commissioner Banks. Well put. I think we, you know, we spent most of last year doing a strategic planning uh, process uh, for this commission. Um, and I think we want to be very uh, strategic about how we proceed on these issues. Certainly, with knowing that we have limited resources, we want to be able to focus those resources on the right things uh, and do so um, you know, with a cohesive uh, body of both the county commission, planning commission, action, you know, other uh, citizen groups uh, without the community and, and the community at large. I appreciate everybody's interest in joining us today. Um, I don't believe we have an executive session, do we? Nope. Well, thank you everybody for, for joining us and we'll go ahead and adjourn the meeting at this time. Have a good day.